Having recently randomly decided to suck all the ink out of an Epson cartridge bought cheaply from eBay, I, I just really wanted to see how much ink was actually in it. Uh, I then decided to open a cartridge, and I don't recommend this because even if you've sucked all the ink out, there's plenty of ink just covering every surface. It makes a huge mess. But it turns out it's really complex inside. And a lot of the complexity is just to make sure that no matter what happens during shipping or storage with the thermal expansion contractions, super hot climates, super cold climates, it can't force the ink back out the air holes. And for that reason, there is a pneumatic valve under here and there's a hydraulic valve here and here. It's very complex, really interesting. Let's get down closer and we shall explore this and I'll show you the path the ink takes through it. So inside the cartridge, the, there's an outer plastic cover that uh, welds on to this orange layer and that in there ends up full of ink as well as the main ink chamber. Inside is a plastic film outlined by this pink area, which covers uh, an inner moulding, and that is the ink chamber. And it's got various gaps to allow the ink to flow through sections within that. And it's important to note that the air into this ch chamber comes in down here, but it's designed so that when this is in the printer and that's pointing down and this is up the way, any bubbles that come up here will go straight up to the top and during printing, it's very unlikely to pull it down because hopefully those bubbles will have burst by the time it finally gets down here. The ink then has to find its way through here. One more bubble trap just before it goes out. And then it goes up here and there's a filter. Uh, let me show you the filter. Here is the filter. It's a little spongy filter, which is down here. And that then uh, has a little bridge that couples from here to here and into this diaphragm area. The diaphragm, this hole is not normally there. I had to use that to force the plastic off the other side. Uh, let me show you the diaphragm side. Um, that is the back layer. Here is the diaphragm itself. So the ink bridges. There's the back of the filter. There's the little uh, seal that basically speaking, because the plastic, there's a layer of plastic sealed on this side as well, it creates lots of little uh, sealed areas that the liquid can flow from across barriers. So the liquid flows uh, into the chamber and then it enters the other side, but the only way it can come through is via a, a silicon rubber diaphragm. So here is Here's the plastic cover I removed off that. Very hard to get off. It was well fused in and also had the plastic layer over the top of it. Uh, then there was a little plastic rubbery, well, actually a silicon rubber, but very strange and squishy, very soft silicon rubber diaphragm. But the main thing is the ink's coming through these holes, but it wants to get through the middle because there is a hole in the middle of the diaphragm. But there is also a tiny little spring here that is pushing that diaphragm down against that pin. So for the printer to be able to suck ink, it has to pull a negative pressure against that for it to open. This also means that if you uh, try squirting ink back in via the outlet port, that diaphragm will close and you won't be able to refill the cartridge by that way. I don't know. I think this diaphragm is mainly to prevent ink siphoning down through the print head, but it could also be to stop you squirting ink in the other way if I was being terribly cynical about it. Let's go back to this once the ink has found its way past that diaphragm, it goes down this channel here, which is again sealed by the plastic strip, pops into this channel here, and that is where we have the printer uh, connection port, which is a little rubber diaphragm like this. Oh, let me show you here. Let me bring in the next exhibit here. We have this little rubber port, which not only couples onto the uh, the ink pipe that the printer has, but it also has a sealing surface on top. And this plastic pin here, plastic pin, pushes down against that. And that is held down firmly by a much bigger spring. This spring here. There's also a little plastic pip at the top that means that when this is manufactured and it's pushed in against the spring, it clicks into a plastic housing. I can't pick that up, it's very fumbly and it stops it from popping back out and pushing this rubber diaphragm back out. So, 
When you pop it into the printer, two things actually happen. It also opens an air inlet at the same time, as well as the pipe going in here and pushing that plunger in so that ink can flow down. Anything else worth mentioning about this? Now, during, the, uh, during shipping and storage, ink gets everywhere in these things. It literally, this is an air void in here. Now, I'm guessing the reason there's an air void is to allow for thermal expansion contraction, but the ink will... Uh, in it because the, there is a sealed plug here that stops air getting initially. And this uh, air void, ink will end up coming down into it because there is a passage from here down to the bottom here. There's just this tiny little uh, gap at the very bottom of this uh, pickup pipe. And this is a sump. And any link ink that does find its way out there isn't wasted. Uh, during normal operation, uh, the air, as it sucks the ink, the air in through this hole, it pulls the ink up from the sump back into the chamber. So very little ink will actually be left in here other than just what coats all the surfaces. Let's take a look at the air passage now, which is super complex. So I'll start off with uh, this picture here. So here is the back of the cartridge and there is the in air inlet. The air inlet starts as this tiny, tiny little crevice in the plastic that weaves down and it takes a very long convoluted route and then it comes back up again and then it goes down into this chamber here. This chamber has a piece of fibrous, papery filter material, like a stiff plasticky paper that is clearly perforated and it's designed partly to absorb any leakage of ink that comes back and also to allow air to go through but not allow ink to come back and blow out the top of the cartridge basically. Note this uh, chamber here and this chamber here. They are uh, the air chambers for actually um, allowing the air into the whole system. So let me go back to this side. So the air has come down into that chamber with the filter and once the filter is removed oh hold on let me grab the other one so many images here once the filter is removed you can see where i've just dragged it off here and it's all where it's been heat sealed around there is a hole at the back that hole ducks down to the other side goes across here ducks down to this side and goes across here this is like a circuit board isn't it and then it goes into a chamber here and this has its own little seal going around it. This also has a plastic cover over it. This plastic cover here with a little pip that when you slide it into the printer, this little pip is pushed in. See the wee pin pushing in? In this printer uh, area is a little plastic, well, a little silicone rubber bung that goes into that hole. On that is a very, very stout heat welded, heat staked, uh, metal spring that pushes that down really hard against that so that uh, the air can't basically, so the air is in here, it can't get through that because this plug is blocking that. When you slide it into the printer, and this is where we have to go to the other side again, there's the little pin that gets pushed in. When the pin is pushed in, uh, from this side, because this is a diaphragm again, that the diaphragm doesn't get punctured, it merely uses it as a, a drum skin diaphragm that it pushes in and it pushes down against, against that little pin and the air can get through to this side. The air then couples into this chamber here, down to the bottom here, and then we have to go to the other side again. Um, and it then, oh no, actually I'm wrong here, wrong here, almost but not quite. That uh, chamber here, when the diaphragm is pressed, it couples the air to this chamber here, which goes to the top. Again, this is to make sure the air enters at the top of the cartridge and not the bottom. And the air then flows down and can now find its way up inside this chamber here via that little slot in the back and into the ink cartridge so it can actually release the pressure of the ink. It's ridiculously complex. Then you look at the refillable cartridges and they're so simple inside. Here's the air plug with a little convoluted path for the air. Uh, there's the ink refill bit. But the main advantage of these, when they ship these, they don't have to worry about ink leaking out them because, well, there's no ink in them when they ship them, so they are super simple. I don't even see an obvious anti-siphon thing here. 
Uh, but the idea of these is you put the air plug in, you take this one out, you fill it with the desired ink up to the brim, uh, then you put that plug back in, and then you put it back in the printer and remove this, and it now lets air in through that. So this doesn't have to have the complication of the non-refillable cartridge. That just leaves a chip. The chip uh, is a little memory chip, the look of it. Very low capacity memory chip, low speed memory chip from what I've read. Uh, it has connections on it, plus and minus for the power. And it's got reset clock and data. And basically speaking, the printer reads how much ink is in it, base, reads the number in it. And then when you do a print job, it then writes it back and says, you've used X amount of ink out estimate in this print job, and it reduces the number. And uh, once it uh, gets to the, the level that's virtually zero, then the uh, printer warns you that the cartridge is empty, even if there's a little bit, bit of ink in it because it is estimating that. It's worth mentioning you do get chip resetters and some people do refill these cartridges by basically drilling a hole through the case and uh, squirting the ink into this area and then putting a rubber bung in. Not sure if that will go with the air passage thing, but it doesn't matter because you've got tons of ink because you can refill it. And then they put this into a little chip resetter and when they do, it's got two linked pins in here and that basically bridges the power from the little batteries in the, the chip resetter. And all it does, I think it reads the data from it to determine which type of uh, cartridge it is. And then it just sets the ink counter back to full again. It just rewrites that and that's how it's restored to normal operation. I did a poll about uh, it, whether people use the proprietary ink cartridges or the refillable ones or if they uh, are the remanufactured ones. Like, say, for instance, this remanufactured one. Uh, and the, uh, about 50% of people used uh, laser jets, laser should, printers, because they were sick of the mess of the inkjet printers. A surprising number used the manufacturer's original cartridges. That's these ones. Uh, but a significant number used the remanufactured, and uh, then there were the hardcore geeks that just filled their own cartridges again and reset them. But there we go. That is it. That uh, what inside have I covered everything? I have. That took such a long time to reverse engineer, particularly because I didn't realise these bits were... I just thought it was going to be something simple. I thought it was going to be liquid out here and air in here, and that was it. I didn't realise there was that little valve. In fact, because I'd been sucking the ink out the syringe, the uh, cartridge with a syringe, it had drawn a vacuum inside it. And when I actually found that and pushed it, there was a loud hissing noise as it let air back into the system. But quite complex, very neat. It uh, it looks like this has evolved over time, probably due to shipping cartridges and finding ink everywhere. But very interesting, very neat to take one apart. Uh, much more complicated than I was expecting. <laughs>